हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू क्रिएटिव मेडिसिन इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल लर्न अबाउट हेलो फ्रेंड्स लेट अस नाउ लर्न सम इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट्स अबाउट द फाइब्रस डिस्प्लेशिया सो व्हाट इज फाइब्रस डिस्प्लेशिया दिस इज आल्सो अ बिनाइन ट्यूमर बट हियर व्हाट इज द सेल ऑफ ओरिजिन इन फाइब्रस डिस्प्लेशिया इट इज एक्चुअली द फाइब्रोब्लास्ट सेल so in the bone matrix also we have fibroblasts so here there is defect in the actually the problem is there is defect in the bone and bone marrow this bone and bone marrow will have maximum amounts of osteoclasts osteoblasts and osteocytes and some amount of fibroblasts also but the cells of the bone and bone marrow are here replaced by the fibrous tissue and where is it most commonly seen it is most commonly seen in actually diaphysis this is also seen in diaphysis okay this is the bone so this fibrous dysplasia most commonly seen in the diaphysis but it can also occur in epiphysis and also metaphysis also it can occur second this fibrous dysplasia it occurs it causes bending of the bone because of this fibrous dysplasia there is growth of the fibrous tissue which is seen in the bone so as a result the bone is not strong so as a result this bone will bend so you will see bending of the bone like this so this is see this bending is seen in fibrous dysplasia okay now this is either in mono osteotic form or poly osteotic form it occurs in first to third decade and it is most common in both males and females it has equal preponderance this fibrous dysplasia is associated with two syndromes one it is associated with mccune albright syndrome so in mccune albright syndrome the patient will have one important thing what the in the mccune albright syndrome the patient will have fibrous dysplasia with cutaneous pigmentation and precocious puberty and it is also associated with endocrine abnormalities like hyperparathyroidism so that is mccune albright syndrome second this fibrous dysplasia is also associated with myxomas intramuscular myxomas and that is called as maza broad syndrome this is called as maza broad syndrome when the fibrous dysplasia is associated with intramuscular myxomas second now this fibrous stroma here histologically you will see there will be irregular bony fragments will be there and in between the bony fragments you will see presence of fibroblast so histologically you will see presence of irregular fibrous arrangement in the oven bone so this appears has alphabet soup or it appears has chinese pattern appearance where else do you see this chinese pattern appearance this chinese pattern appearance is also seen in corini bacterium diphtheria then in the x ray you will see presence of this shepherd crook deformity then how are you going to treat it the treatment is you will have to do osteotomy and do an internal fixation you should first remove the completely bent bone and you should do an internal fixation here okay this is about the fibrous dysplasia and in order to prevent this conversion you should also give bisphosphonates okay this is fibrous dysplasia in the fibrous dysplasia one more thing if this is the lesion you will also see presence of some um scalloping bone areas are also seen so here you will see so this is actually a developmental abnormality okay in fibrous dysplasia one more thing the malignant transformation is also rare then after fibrous dysplasia the next important thing it is also a fibrous defect but this is actually a non ossifying fibrous defect here in non ossifying fibrous defect there is no ossification okay so this is actually the commonest benign lesion and it occurs in 35% and of children and it, here you will see presence of incidental findings here histologically you will see presence of spindle shaped cells which are actually arranged in whorls arrangement there is spindle shaped cells which are arranged in whorls okay so this is called as story form lesion also now here there is high fibroblastic proliferation and this fibroblastic proliferation will result in high cellularity of the tumor this high fibroblastic proliferation is responsible for massive cellularity of the tumor 
Then here you will see that the uh, patient, this is most commonly seen where it is actually seen in the metaphysis of the bone mainly. This is mainly seen in the metaphysis of the bone. In which bone do you see? It is also seen in the femur. femur. So it is seen in metaphysis of femur and tibia. Okay. Now um, this is also an eccentric lesion which consists of lobulated lesion here you will see on x-ray you will see presence of a lobulated lesion is seen with sclerotic scalloped edges are seen now how are you going to treat it treatment is if the patient attains skeletal maturity these will ossify these lesions will completely ossify and they disappear they can disappear but Sometimes pathological fractures can be there. But if the patient is symptomatic either with mass or pain, then you should do curatage and bone grafting is done. So this is about non-ossifying fibrous defect. Thank you. Thank you and thank you for watching.